I'm looking forward to this, UFC 204, the champ, Michael Bisbing, Dan Henderson. Now, the last time these two men fought, Henderson not only got the win, but also delivered a blow well after the fight was over that both fighters still talk about today. It's the underlying storyline. You see it right there in this title fight coming up on Saturday on pay-per-view. We are pleased to welcome into Sports Center now the middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisbing. And Michael, let's start right there with that knockout back at UFC 100. You have said there is no animosity between you and Dan, but it's about avenging that loss. How much do you think about that fight? You know, to be honest, that fight really uh, isn't a fair recollection of the reality of the situation. Back in 2009, Dan Henderson was taking testosterone replacement therapy. He was allowed 16 times the natural amount of testosterone. Now that treatment has been banned, but yeah, he still fights. The guy was at an unfair advantage. I've achieved everything I have through blood, sweat, and tears. I've done it the old-fashioned way. And like that football coach was just talking about, I did it through discipline. I didn't take shortcuts. I didn't take cheats. He knocks me out. Fair play. He got the job done. But as I say, he was at an unfair advantage. Now I get to set the record straight on a level playing field. Nobody's cheating. There's no steroids being taken. And Dan Henderson will be knocked out. This is my time. I will get my revenge. Make no mistake. Michael, we're big fans of you here. And speaking of tears, you became the champion this summer, taking the fight with Luke Rockhold on short notice. I remember watching that night and your reaction to finally winning a world title. It was incredible. What did that night mean to you in the manner in which you were able to knock Luke out? Well, you know, I mean, of course, all professional fighters they want to be the world champion one day. And that was a dream that I had, you know, and uh, after all this time, the ups and the downs to finally achieve that, yeah, that was an amazing moment for me. It really was. And, uh, you know, Luke and myself, obviously, we were heated rivals in the past, so it's always satisfying to win a fight like that by a knockout. And that's what I'll do this Saturday against Dan Henderson. I'm looking for that knockout. I owe him one. He knocks me out, as you said. He gave me another one after the bell. I'm not going to give Dan Henderson another one after the bell because there's going to be no need. I'm going to hit him. He's going to go down, and he's going to be asleep. I won't stoop to those levels because I don't need to stoop to those levels. He's going to sleep, believe you me. You know, it's been a trend in the last couple of years. Very short title reigns for fighters in the UFC. You have said you waited your whole life to become a champion. What is the formula to keep in the belt for an extended period of time for you? Well, of course, you know, hanging on to the belt is very, very hard. You know, you're fighting the number one contender one after the other. So that's why the belt changed hands so frequently, because the UFC, we fight the best guys in the world. Uh, you know, for this fight, I'm just going to do what I do well, go out there and not stress out on the situation. You know, this is, this is a petty fight for me. This is a fight that I know I can win. I'm just going to go out there, believe in myself, fight to the best of my ability. If I do that, I believe I win this fight pretty comfortably. Michael, there's been some criticism because uh, of, of this fight happening in the first place because Dan Henderson says win or lose, he's going to retire. Are you surprised that Dana White gave you this fight knowing that Henderson most likely won't fight again, win or lose? No, I'm not surprised in the slightest because – Dana White knows, everybody knows, the bookies knows, the matchmakers know, the fans know, and you know. Dan Henderson ain't winning this fight. Dan <laughs> Henderson this fight. I'm, I hate to say it, but the American hero does not prevail in this fight. He loses. Uh, I, I read somewhere today, and you've always been known for being in great shape at all times, maybe overtraining at times. One of your tra uh, trainers said that when you went to film a movie for two weeks during training, that that was a good thing. What were you thinking about doing a movie right in the middle of your training camp? Yeah, well, my last fight, uh, I was filming the new Triple X movie, and, um, yeah, I took, the, I took the fight on short notice. I mean, the thing is, I've been a martial artist and I've been a fighter my entire life. So at 37 years old, the training's done. And I'm a guy that looks after myself. You know, I stay in shape. I like to train. I like to eat well. And, you know, I, I exercise discipline. So I was able to pay that fight on short notice. Uh, and for this fight, I did the same thing. I booked the movie halfway through training camp. I went out to London. I filmed the movie for two weeks, came back and did another four weeks of training. You know, I think it's a good distraction. It stops me from overtraining. 
I still remain focused. I still remain disciplined. And as I said, I've done this since I was a kid. I don't need eight weeks of sharpening to get ready for a fight. I was a born fighter. And, uh, you know, two weeks, two days, two minutes. It doesn't matter who it is, where it is. I'm ready to fight. It's UFC 204. Dan Henderson is the challenger. Michael Bisbing is the champion this Saturday. Full coverage uh, after the fight right here on SportsCenter. Michael, best of luck, and thank you for joining us here tonight. My pleasure, guys. Enjoy the fight.